Hello everyone, George here, and we're starting with Ray Trace Challenge Chapter 2. We're going to create the color class and the canvas class. The color class is just going to be R, G, and B values. Not sure what's going to happen with alpha. We'll deal with that in a later class, but I haven't gotten that far in the book yet. So just R, G, B. We're going to implement a default constructor, and we're also going to create a two-string method so we can print out our results to the console for unit testing. Here's our first unit test. We're going to test out the constructor and make sure that the R, G, and B value print out properly and everything's set up according to... Uh, what we expect. We go ahead and create a default um, value with, with no parameters as well as ones we set ourselves. We're also going to hard code some static values for color, red, green, blue, yellow, black, and white, and I'll eventually add more colors as well. But these are the simple ones that we need. I like how Unity has those already created for us. Just saves us a little bit of time with having to, you know, write out more floating point numbers. Everything seems to print out fine in our unit test. Now we're going to go ahead and add our operators. We're going to do addition. We're going to do subtraction. We're also going to do scalar multiplication and multiplying two colors by one another. Of course, addition is just each component added to each other. Subtraction is just subtracting the components. Scalar multiplication is just multiplying a float value by each of those individual values uh, in the vector. And uh, the last one we're going to do the, what is it called? The Hadamard product, I think. Uh, Hadamard product is just multiplying two colors together and that's component by component. So R times R, G times G, B times B. And that makes sense if you think about colors, like if you have a black color and then a white color and you multiply zeros by ones, of course, if the, the object's black, it's going to, even with lighting on it or color, it's going to appear black as well. Hence the zeros are going to cancel out the one. Now we're doing our unit testing for this. We're going to do addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication, and of course, color multiplication against each other. Check them out. Everything looks to work just fine. Now we're going to move on to the canvas class in just a few seconds. The canvas class is going to be a 2D array of color objects, or we're going to write individual values to each pixel. First thing we need for a canvas is our width and our height value, so we create a getter for both of those. You're going to set the width and height when you create the canvas object. Uh, we might add the ability to change that, you know, through uh, a method, but at this time we're not going to do that. We're going to have a separate method called create canvas, which is going to actually create the uh, array. But then another method called fill canvas, which we can use all over the place, is going to go through, iterate over each pixel, and then fill that with whatever color you specify. This way we have both a create method and a fill canvas method if we just need to wipe the entire screen. We're also going to create a set pixel and get pixel value. You'll notice I'm, I'm writing out these methods. That's just how I like to work. I like to write them out instead of using the shortcuts in C Sharp, just because in Java and C++ and all the other languages that I code in, you have to do that as well. We're going to create our unit test for that, testing out the canvas. You know, we can't really test it out just yet. We're going to test it out in a little bit, but for right now, we're just going to print out the width and the height for the constructor. We're going to um, test to see uh, whatever our value might be with fill. And then for get and set, we're going to grab a value and print it out and then set a value and make sure it's the right one as well. Here we are creating our canvas. We're going to do 100 by 100 pixels to start with. And we are going to go ahead and fill the canvas there, but we're not going to show any real results at this point except that we can look in the actual, uh, when we're debugging this thing, we can look into the array and make sure all the values actually match green. Here you can see we're going, ahead and going to go ahead and print out the height with a pixel value for, at a particular location, and we're going to set a pixel value to be blue, and we're going to see whether or not that value did turn to blue by using a get pixel. Here you can see I'm iterating over the array, checking to see the values are actually green. Everything looks okay, so we're going to move on to the next part of this. And for this, we're going to create another class. It's going to be for saving our Canvas object out. We are using the PPM, I believe, is the file extension for this, which is, I'd actually never heard of this file format before until I read this book. But it seems somewhat simple, although I will say I did struggle a lot with this one because I made a lot of simple mistakes. I should have done some more unit testing to make things easier for me to diagnose. But I kind of jump in uh, a little overzealously. You'll notice I create an enum type. I go to the to the extremes of creating you know, different types that you'll pass in. I'm pretty much, I, I should have simplified things a lot earlier and just said, you know, let's just spit out the PPM and we'll worry about all these other options for saving later. I will eventually go back and nuke all this code because I just want things to be simple and work instead of having to deal with all this nonsense that's not really helping me out. Here we have the create PPM method, which takes in the canvas object. It needs to know the default maximum value because all of our values are floating point numbers between zero and one, theoretically. It can go above and below that, obviously, but that's the, the range we're actually working in. And 255 is the maximum value that create PPM is going to have in it. So values from zero to 255. I create a header in this case. The header is the, the file type, which is P3. The body is going to be generated here in just a moment where it's going to iterate through every single pixel and then create the different lines. 
And then the footer is just a, a new line because apparently one file format, or at least one program requires there be a white space at the very end. Now here is the first mistake. I iterate over the X values first and then the Y values, which means the Y values are gonna get drawn out and then the and then we move to the next X one. That's going to uh, reverse everything and it's gonna screw everything up. So I'm gonna have to fix that later on, but you'll notice me screwing it up for a while here until I get, until I recognize that and see what I'm doing. Here you'll see I also create a string value for R, G, and B, but then I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do I wanna handle the conversion from zero to one to zero to 255? So first I write this more complicated method called normalized color and clamp, which takes in the floating point value, the maximum value, as well as the minimum value. And of course, I don't like the fact that max and min are flipped, but because I wanted min to have a default value and not to give max a default value, I, I put them out of order. Here I go ahead and delete that method, then bring it back, and then I realize what I wanna do is just have a clamp method by itself. So now I'm going to have it so that I expect this value to come in as a floating point value, but I'm not going to uh, rescale it here. I'm just going to make sure it's not exceeding the minimum and maximum value. So right there you can see string R's is clamping the color value multiplied by that maximum value and then converting that over to a string. Now, the way I implemented this method is incredibly bad and ends up slowing down the program because I'm doing all of this string manipulation where I continue to add to the string, which means the string has to be destroyed and then a new string has to be created where you latch on the next value and it's just a mess. Don't do this. I'm going to fix all this shortly when I realize that it takes forever to print out this particular document. So going through and uh, what I'm trying to do is, it turns out that some versions of this file format can only accept 70 characters per line. So I'm going ahead and I'm making sure that I calculate how many characters I've gone and if I hit that maximum, I go ahead and uh, start a new line instead. Now we're going to be using systemio.file.write line to write out the entire, excuse me, write all text right now to write everything out. It takes in the file name and then it's gonna take in the actual string. That's where I'm kind of messing things up. I'm gonna build this entire huge string of objects and then pass it out. Very shortly after I notice performance problems, what I end up doing is writing out each line as they're generated, which increases the speed just ridiculously. Um, you'll see it very shortly. Here I'm looking at the file. Right now with the file being a square, as well as uh, very small, I'm not noticing any performance issues or problems with how it's being created. But like I said, I flip-flopped the width and the height value during that loop. And that's going to come back to bite me as soon as I make the dimensions not square, because when it's square, I can't notice anything. I'm also testing things out by going into the, the, the challenge part of this chapter, which is actually implementing a canvas object that is going to take each tick of our projectile from the previous chapter, and it's going to draw that projectile's location onto the, the canvas. So here we're iterating through each one. I'm grabbing the X and Y position. I'm converting them over truncating the results into integer values, which are then used to index into the image. And I'm going to need to also make sure that when I index into the image, I make sure that I do it properly. You'll notice I check to see if X is less than the width and Y is less than the height but I don't check to see whether or not until right there that X is greater than zero and Y is greater than zero, which was giving me an error that you probably didn't see because the, the, everything's moving so fast. But check it out. As soon as I in, in make that image size really large, did you see how long it took for that to process? That's a big problem. So I'm actually gonna go in and fix all that shortly. But here I'm playing around with the, the vector values, trying to figure out something that will actually draw to the entire screen. So here I'm back in Create PPM, and this is where I take a few seconds and I actually read the documentation for how I'm supposed to write stuff out because I'm, I don't write stuff out all the time, so it takes me a minute to remember how to do this in this language. So here we're going to open up, we're going to spit out all the different characters and I'm going to do that for the uh, header, I'm going to do that for each line of the, uh, for the body, and I'm also gonna do that for the footer. Now right now I'm still spitting out that almost 70 character line. I'm going to get rid of that and only spit out each line uh, or each pixel value individually that way I can debug things easier. I don't need to worry about this 70 character limit. Every line is only going to be, you know, maybe like 10 or 12 characters based upon the, the values that I have. Here I'm taking a look to see that I've uh, successfully converted a pixel to being yellow and I can see that value inside of there. Once again, I was looking there and everything's not quite working right yet. Things are taking a little bit too long to process. And I'm also noticing that things seem to be offset funny. It's like uh, things are drawn slightly wrong, but in other cases it's drawn right. And it has to do with the just getting the magic number. There you can see, uh, I actually got it to, everything's uh, flip-flopped on the X and Y axis, which I'm going to have to fix as well. 
And uh, I just did that there where I swapped the Y and the X. You can see it right there for int X, Y and int X. I'm not exactly happy with how the book describes the PPM file format. So I go ahead and jump on Google, read about it. And uh, it turns out there are two different formats. And the one this book uses is the sort of more less un lesser known of the two, the P3 format. So it turns out that they say it just has to be white space. So I go in there and now I'm simplifying things. I'm looking at my file. I'm seeing where I have excess white space because I don't know if that white space is being ignored or read. It's a little ambiguous and I'm not familiar with this file format. So I'm kind of playing around with it here. I'm going to iterate through every X value, every Y value. But then I realize I don't need that. I just want to create a diagonal line across, you know, 00112233. So I can just do one iteration and make sure that's the same for the X and Y value. And I'm pasting all those values as being read. I noticed the zero zero coordinate as well as the final coordinate are not properly represented. So now I'm going through and doing a little bit more testing, trying to get that to be fixed, noticing that nothing's really working. And this is where very shortly, I'm just going to say, screw this too complicated. I'm just trying to get this to work. So I start gutting the code and making this dirt simple, or I'm going to uh, just push out each line one after the other until everything works. Simplifying it there, you'll notice now I get a perfectly diagonal line. However, you'll notice there's a gap between each line. Now that's a problem. So we're going to jump in here. I'm going to start reading and trying to get a better sense of what's going on. It turns out that I'm just spitting this stuff out improperly. Now I'm creating my own test value where I, I put yellows and greens and whites in the right locations to make sure everything looks proper. And I'm going through and I'm looking at the P plain PPM file and that down there at the bottom, you're going to see they give you an example image. After several failures, I'm going to grab that and create it on my desktop, as you can see there. I'm going to open it up inside of Photoshop to see what their test is like. And I'm going to compare that to my own and see whether or not things are working. And that's where I, I start to format the file and I delete the different elements to make sure that they look properly. Here you can see I'm actually lining them up as they're supposed to be inside of my image as opposed to how they're being pushed out. And I'm seeing why this doesn't work. And here you can notice I have an extra row being generated. And that's what I'm going to end up getting rid of very shortly. There you can see the problem was that I had swapped the Y and the X, the int Y and X order, but I didn't change the, the, uh, the conditional. I was still using the width on the height and the height on the width. Now that I fixed that, everything's working just fine, except for the fact that the Y axis is flip flop. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that, of course, by just uh, taking the height of the image and subtracting that out. Once I get my vectors, you know, somewhat nice, I get a pretty good image across the entire thing. Here I'm going in there now, canvas.height minus y, and that's going to print out a very nice image. And that's pretty much it for this chapter. In the next chapter, we're going to deal with math again. We're going to dive into matrices and set up all of the different operations that are necessary to make matrices work. And I think it's chapter five or six where we get to start doing ray tracing and drawing graphics to the screen using our canvas and all the different stuff that we've created. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're following along, please let me know how you're doing as well. And I will see you all next time. So long and goodbye.